In this video, you will see a simple mob trap. The key device is the entity reader, which we now pass through on our way out of the cave. It won't react to our player, but look what happens to this zombie. Entity reader in this case serves as an intelligent pressure plate. In total, this trap only takes up four blocks of space. I'll show you the simplest example first, and then you'll see how you can make this trap even better. First, you need to start building a network through which everything will communicate. So we will place a logic cable here, which is its important element. We will attach an entity reader to it, which will decide the fate of the entities that pass through it. The next connected block will be a monodirectional connector that serves as a wireless logic cable. In order for such a connection to work, it needs to be connected to another such block, which must be exactly opposite from it, and the signal range is up to 512 blocks. You can tell that the connection has been successfully established by the red signal between them after placing the second block. As you can see, the connection works without a problem even if there are other blocks in the path between these blocks. Now it's time to place the dispenser loaded with arrows to fire them at enemies when needed. We will guide our network consisting of logic cables and monodirectional connectors to it. We will place a redstone right on the logic cable to it, which can send redstone signals to it, but it will still need to be set up. Then we will connect a variable store somewhere in this network, which will also be needed in the future as well as a logic programmer, which will not be part of the trap and will only serve our purposes of programming future logic. Now let's start setting the trap. We need to tell the redstone writer to send a redstone signal when someone other than the player passes through the entity reader. Prepare several empty variable cards. So first we will want the entity reader to report who is on it. So we insert an empty card into the slot on this line, in which the exact action we want is written. Now we will want to evaluate from this report whether this entity is a target to attack and we will only want a yes or no answer. Let's do this through the logic programmer. Here we will select is mob operator, which will ask if it is a mob. However, be careful here. Animals are not considered mobs in this case, so the trap will be triggered when it detects, for example, a creeper, so we put a card regarding the entity type in the left slot and an empty card in the bottom one, in which the whole new logic is written. Now notice what you can evaluate here besides is mob, so for example using is animal operator the trap will shoot at animals only, or if you specify is player it will shoot at players only. Now insert the card in the variable store where you wrote the reporting from the entity reader regarding the entity type. It's important to do this because it's just a card with a helper variable that needs to be somewhere in the network. It can be said that all not empty cards you create must not be in your inventory in the future, but inserted somewhere in the network with which they are supposed to work. Now we need to finish the last thing in our trap logic. Although it is already written on the card that the redstone signal should be activated if a mob enters on the entity reader, this would mean that the signal is activated only once. But we want the trap to fire at him at regular intervals. Therefore, let's connect to the network the device entity reader with which we can achieve this. Now we will insert an empty card into this slot called redstone clock. Here you can see that it appears here momentarily true, otherwise it's false. This will serve to periodically activate the redstone signal. Using the plus button, we will shorten the length of one cycle from 20 to 10 game ticks, so that the arrow will be fired every half second. Finally, in the logic programmer, select this and operator with which we will connect all the conditions together. Insert the card with the ismob operator written into the left slot and the redstone clock card into the right slot. We will write all this in a new, empty card. Because the cards we used to create this final were only auxiliary, so we put them in the variable store. And the main one with all the logic needs to be put in the redstone writer on this line. Now the trap is ready to use, let's check it out.
Unfortunately, this trap is not perfect as it is the simplest type. So you can see that sometimes enemies can pass through it. The solution could be, for example, to increase the number of entity readers by 2 to 3, but this would also mean modifying the logic, where we will perform very similar operations as in the past. So let's try to add the second one. As before, we will store the aspect in the card, which will make it possible to read who is on the new entity reader. We will then need to evaluate from this data whether it is a mob. Now we want to tell the redstone writer to create a redstone signal if an enemy has appeared on the first entity reader and a regular time has occurred due to the signal loop, or if an enemy has appeared on the second entity reader enemy and the regular time for the signal occurred. So we have already completed the first part of the condition, and with the second one, it remains to connect the newly written is mob operator using the end operator. Now we take the card containing the first part of the condition from the redstone writer and connect it to the second card in the logic programmer using the OR operator, which is represented by these two vertical lines. We will write this entire condition in a new card. Now we put the cards that make up the newly created card into the variable store and insert it into the redstone writer. Now more difficult for mobs to pass. If you want to use three or more entity readers to detect enemies, you will proceed in exactly the same way as now. You always only separate the new condition from the card using the OR operator. Thanks for watching. If the video helped you give us a like and subscribe.